Hello, and welcome to the promotional video for Infinite Openings. My name is Christian Bursell, and I'm the creator of the CAD Swift Library for ARCHICAD. Infinite Openings is our new window and door tool, so let's have a look. I'm sure you have noticed these two shapes here, and I will show you how to achieve this later. It's actually quite quick. But first, let's get into the more typical settings. When you first open up the dialog, you'll be directed to the panel arrangement page. This is the main page you, where you design the configuration of your panels. We have a select number of columns and rows, and these can be increased and decreased to whatever figure you like. It, we used to have an eight by eight limitation. However, now there are no limitations. This eight could very easily be 18, or even we could go up to 88. Obviously things are getting a little congested here and 88 is probably something a bit unreasonable but we have got methods to resolve this as well. Let me just take it back to 18. This is a configuration that, that might be a little bit more typical. As you can see it's starting to get a little bit congested so what we can do is we can stretch it out. And obviously down as well. And you can even reposition it with your X and Y coordinates here. Okay, once you've chosen your number of columns, I'm just going to bring that back to eight, and your number of rows, and you've got it all looking nice and friendly in the interface, you then go through and turn off your global controls, and then you can turn on and off any portion of Mayan and Transom. And as you can see, it's quite quick. Pretty much everything you're going to see in this video today will be shown at real speed. There will only be a few bits that I speed up, and it'll be very obvious what those pieces are. Okay, so now that we've chosen our configuration, might just choose something a little bit more random here, just for fun. So if we uncheck these equal boxes, then we can just type in whatever width we want. However, this aspect can also be easily handled in the 3D view. With the hotspots showing, we can simply grab them and move them and align them up with external features of the building. This makes configuring your panel arrangement extremely fast and also a little bit of fun. Now you may have noticed the little um, floating points here. These are the intersections of the mullions and transoms that we removed. Once we have done our panel configuration, we move on to the intersections. We've basically got that same window arrangement, same positioning, so everything lines up nicely. Okay, now the first thing we can do is we can turn this onto a, a global setting. These are obviously all the other configurations. The first thing I want to do is I want to turn off these two elements. So I'll uncheck that box. Turn these two items off. So if I come in here and I'm sticking with my no dominance, then I will go with a bottom line for that one, a top line for that one, a top line for this one, and a bottom line for these ones across here. And this one needs to be a corner, and this one also is a corner. This one is a vertical, and this one also is a vertical. So you can see it's very easy to see the effect of what's going on. Click OK, and we can see we now have a much nicer representation in those elements. I'll just show you an example. If I was to change this to a mullion element, Mullion dominant. As you can see, we get the full Mullion expressed there. Okay, once we have tidied up our intersections, we then move on to one of the new features within this tool that is the ability to nominate a different glass material for each panel. Okay, so we have a global feature up here, or we can turn that off and we can start putting in whatever colors we want. If you want to do this a little bit faster. Um, this interface is pretty quick, but just clicking and choosing and clicking and choosing and clicking and choosing can get tedious. So you can come straight into the array here and you can start to put your pattern in here. So I'm gonna do a pattern um, that just alternates like this. So I just take that and we just start going across diagonals. If we have a look at that in 3D, you can see we have uh, four different, well, three different colors in, in this one window pane here as well. So in that one, obviously, we know it's this element. We can choose whatever we want our dom dominant element to be. And they join seamlessly as if they're one panel. Okay, 
the next phase. Um, also in here, you have some standard uh, global controls of thicknesses and, and positioning. Okay, now operable elements. This is again where the, the infinite side of, of this tool comes into play. You can nominate any number of openings. So this is where we do that. I can select just one and we get one appearing and we get a series of information on, on that element. I can nominate um, 16 if I want. So let's just start with, with one. With one opening selected, the first thing you want to do is choose what type. Uh, I'm going to go with a bifold or multifold window. Then I'm going to position it. To position it, we come over here and we set our start and end positions. So if you click set end, and then we tick where we want it to go, and click set start, and tick where we want it to start from. Now if I turn that off, you can see my window is now positioned in the new spot. And you can also see that up here. We can then nominate a direction, which is specific to the different operable type, and also a positioning in the frame, an offset, and series of symbol options. In this situation, we're using a, a multifold element, so we get this multifold and multi slide settings down here where we can nominate the number of panels on each side. We also have our global window settings, and we also have the option to put a head track on, make it external. So we can see it, make it a size that we can actually see. And if I just click OK, you will see we now have a head track element there. So if you want to put a sliding door out there and that head track can overhang on either side, I'll just go put that in, probably a typical um, door width. So that can carry a sliding door similar to what I've configured over here. Okay, let's go back and have a little bit more of a look at these operable elements and see what's available to us. So we have all the configuration options here to very easily place this element using this interface, so much faster interface. We also have a huge range of operable types to choose from, from all sliding configurations, multi-folds, louvers, double hungs, um, pivot doors. And down the bottom, we also have an opening called empty opening. This just creates a hole straight through the window. So that can be used for several purposes. However, the real purpose I've developed that is so that you could put a window inside a door or a door inside a window. This element has been created with the infinite door. However, it could have easily been done with the infinite window as they are both the same part. One is simply a door tool and one is simply a window tool. Now, if we want to put a separate piece in here, all we have to do is go back into our panel arrangement. We'll turn off these elements tidy up the intersection, then we will extend our window down to the bottom. So if we go set start, put that down here. Okay, and you'll notice that when it goes to the bottom, it actually cuts out the bottom part of the frame. That is based on the threshold settings of the door. At the moment, we've set it to recessed. If we set it to standard, then we get a threshold with a nominated thickness. I'll just remove that for now. Now we have that done, we can go to our 2D, we can select the infinite window, we can place him right here, and select that window, stretch him down into these positions. I've conveniently put hot lines on the mullions so it's very easy to snap to them. Let's work in 3D, hey? What we will do is just adjust his height, and we might set that to a sliding door. Now one thing to note with these sliding doors, you also have an option here to turn off the fixed panels on the sides so that every element can be sliding. Really handy with the head track configuration. Okay, click OK, stretch this up, join. So now we have two separate elements making up the one piece. Therefore we can schedule this item as our window and this item as our door. Okay, so that covers most of the main functions. There is, however, one last, very more interesting function, and that is the polygon. We have added in this framing system three different types of frames, in fact. There is a standard frame, which will just give you your typical rectangular arrangements. There is also, if we go to our frame settings, there is also a curtain wall, and that allows you to chamfer different sides of the frame and also set up a whole series of different corner configurations. 
but there is also the polygon function and this is the real fun part. Okay, back to the 3D window. Now before we do this, there is a parameter below the frame selection that nominates which hotspots are active. If you have the mullion and transom hotspots active, then you can move mullions and transoms around. And if you have the polygon frame hotspots active, then you can adjust the shape of the window. So let's choose that. We now have a new series of nodes. If you're familiar with the Swift ceiling tool, you would know that the first node adds, adds a point and the second node curves the edge. We can happily come in and add more nodes or simply move the existing ones. The center node actually curves the edge. So that's how it curve. Now you'll notice the resolution is pretty bad there. If we simply go into our settings, into our appearance settings, we can bump that resolution up. Let's put it up to something pretty high. So now you can see you're getting quite a nice curve there. This can be used to make basically any shape window. As you can see over here, I've just traced our logo and then adjusted the colors of the panels. So I'll show you how I can do that. It's quite quick. First, I want to get an image and I want to place it over here. So I'm going to do this in the elevation view. Okay, and I'll just place this down near the window. First thing to do is to position the window in an overall size that encompasses the full image. Okay, now all I need to do is I go in and turn on my polygon frame. Make sure my polygon frame hotspots are selected. Click OK. And now I just start dragging nodes. So what you're seeing here is all real time. I have not sped up this video at all for this purpose. So you can see exactly how quick and easy this is to configure. I've just put in some general ones there and then I can come in and add these others. Make sure I can find the spots. If you're drawing hot spots on here first to actually really highlight the different coordinates of, of all the geometry, then that would make it a little bit easier for you to sort of configure around this element too. But as you can see, this is all happening really quite quickly. Now in the previous model, just to my, just to the right, I actually went to the detail of including all these little ribs in here. So I will do that, but I'll speed up that bit of the video so you don't have to watch it all. Okay, gonna speed the video up. Okay, now with all my points chosen, I just need to go in and add in the curves. Quite simply, using the curve aspect now, we might bump up the resolution so this is a bit easier to see. Okay, so now you can see what happens with the curve. So it's the second node along for the curve. And you just simply go around, having all the sections out. Second node, curve. Second node, curve. Second node, curve. So you can even see how this aspect is quite quick. I'll speed the process up now. And there we have it. Let's go have a look in 3D. Okay, 
Okay, there is our bird. Once you've got your shape, you can then go and do any sort of panel and colour and configuration and operable elements in any positions. This is a um, louver here. This is the hotspot to adjust the opening angle of the blades. There's also a global setting for that. There's quite a few other functions. There's a tiny little sliding window up here. So as you can see, we can um, slide the operable elements open in 3D quite easily. And you can also select the panels in the 2D view and open and close them. Obviously with this element, we need to adjust this to push us out underneath this pelmet. We can simply do that by selecting the element, nominating its position to frame in manual, and then offsetting it a required amount. Just gonna leave that at 50 there and see how that goes. And that's pretty good. So all we'd have to do now is increase the size of this pelmet to accommodate. So there you can see we have the perfect configuration. Okay, so that covers the general functionality of the tool. As you can see, it basically is capable of infinite configurations. I'll just quickly run over the, the features once more. So we can have any panel arrangement we want and we can turn on and off individual sections of mines and transom. We can also fine tune with specific intersection properties. We have a unique function that I'm not sure is available in any other part where you can actually nominate individual materials for each panel of glass. You also have the ability to have any number of operable elements and those openings can be any number of types. There are also very flexible configuration, positioning and opening parameters. Just briefly going through the rest of the interface, this is just a quick list of your operable elements. Sometimes it's easy when you've got a lot to be able to see them all um, lined up like that and change them quickly. These are your panel styles, so global door panel styles. So we have a series of standard panel styles and you can adjust um, all the different sizing and, and number of the panels within that configuration. There's also a recess and standard threshold option and you can tr control the thickness of all, all the composites of the panel. There is a handle function and there is a kick plate. We also have two signage elements. So you can turn signage on and you can turn on different text for different door panels. As I said, there is actually two separate elements. That's not for each face of the panel, that's just two indiv individual signage elements for the one face, for the external face. And then we have all your typical casing, seals, header, and all your standard representation parameters. As mentioned, we also can do through our frames, if we nominate our curtain wall frame, then we get access to the ability to turn on and off individual sections of the frame as well as mitre the corners. So we can put an angle on either corner. This is obviously a lot easier to do in the, in the 2D view, so I'll just show you that. So you can see that when we turn on the curtain wall frame, we have these two extra hotspots here. And these allow us to basically mitre the corners. That then allows us to join these to other elements. And you can create a series of different mulling configurations. We actually have four different styles. And each different style just bases the posts in a slightly different position, whether that be center line, inside, or outside. The difference between style one and style two is visible better in the 3D. So you can see on this element, the post is the dominant feature at the top. If we go to style one, now it's the top frame that is the dominant feature. There was one last aspect I wanted to show you, is we can go from our polygon to a standard or a curtain wall arrangement and not lose the data that we've stored creating that polygon. The final thing I want to show you is the quality of the geometry. So if I just move in a little bit closer here and you can see on these curves and these points that the quality of the geometry is absolutely impeccable. If we have a look over here where it transitions through curves and points, we can see how accurate it is. This is achieved because the geometry is created through mathematical equations that allow us to achieve spot on spatial coordinates and hence a very high resolution. And because it's an equation, we can just turn down the resolution if it gets a little too high. Okay. I hope you all enjoyed watching the video and I hope you're excited to start using infinite openings by CatSwift. Thank you.